uh, Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to read down verses 1 through 7. Go ahead and turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter number 4. We're going to read down through verses 1 through 7. Proverbs chapter 4. <coughs> Begin reading in verse number 1. I like, thank all those coming out tonight, all those tuning into the broadcast. Let's look into the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 1, down through verse number 7. Hear ye children, yes, the instruction of a father. Come on. And attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. I give you good doctrine. Shake ye not my law. Mm -hmm. For I was my father's son. I was my father's son. Tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Come on. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. You know what? As he began to go through here, the, almost the sum total of Proverbs, wise man, uh, Solomon, God gave him wisdom. The sum total of all of it is, if you listen, just listen. The sum total of all of it, if you process it and, and look at it analytic, analytically or even with any level of depth, the sum total of all of it is, what will take place if you listen? You'd be shocked if you knew how many times people deal with stuff. They didn't listen. You'd be shocked with how many young people today in the world today are dealing with heartache and anguish, families torn apart, credit messed up, life messed up. They got all tight. You got to go to jail to see them. They got felonies. They got to do all these things. But the baby mama drama and all this other stuff. But the bottom line is, it's not. understand how to wire this building. Knowledge is knowing 10 times 10. Knowledge is knowing how to solve for X or whatever it may be. But wisdom is understanding God's perspective of that thing. When you get that, you 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 understand God's perspective. When you understand that you're going to reap what you sow. Some men's sins are open before, others follow after. Wisdom. Every morning, having votes with our children, trying to put wisdom in them. Listen, I don't care if all the young girls are talking to uh, 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 boys. You got this and the others. Just be watching. Don't get too personal with a boy. If you don't want to get a boy, my mother taught boys and books don't mix. Amen. Don't get too personal with a girl. Don't get too personal with a boy. The opposite. Don't get too caught up in that. Just be friends with them. Why? You have not developed emotionally to the point that you can make decisions in regards to love. Don't involve yourself with it. You got your whole future. You don't want to get so heavy in the 10th, 11th, 12th grade that you're making decisions based upon your relationship with him and what he's going to do with his life. Here you are making the choices and decisions about the totality of where your life is going to go, but you're basing these choices on some relationship you got that ain't going nowhere for the most part. Don't get too heavy, she would tell us. Don't get too heavy. Don't involve yourself in that. You get too heavy with a boy now, they'll be chasing now, but in a few years they'll wear you out, they'll go up to the elbows and kept themselves. Don't involve yourself like that. Don't let him put his hands on you like that. Make him respect you, son. Son, listen, don't involve yourself. Evil communication corrupt good manners. If you know they still are smoking dope, you know they're stealing stuff out of the library right now, or stealing stuff out of the lunchroom now, in a few years they'll be stealing cars, son. It'll start off here, but it's going to go here, son. Watch who you surround yourself with. Go and play 
and spend your nights at home. I don't know what they're doing in that house. Stay outside and play. Don't go inside. No, no, no. Where are you going with this? And let me just tell you this. With all this technology, it's the same principle. When we were younger, our parents vetted everything we did, everywhere we went, and what we involved ourselves with. Where are you going? Who's going to be there? Have I met their parents? Have I talked to them? So on and so forth. But now the same premise. But you will put all this technology in your little child's head, and they can just stay in their room and go everywhere that you could ever imagine. He's just letting it happen. You better do it with some caution and some wisdom and some pride. Hold on, where are you going with this? Mm -hmm. Just like I told you, I don't want you going to someone's house. What site you going on? What you where, hold on, go all up in your room doing whatever. You could be involved in anything. You wonder where all your spirits coming from. You'd be shocked with some of these spirits these children got today. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Why technology in their little bedroom just doing whatever? Friends and uh, uh, introducing them to stuff. Go to this site. Go check out this. And you ain't got no clue. Just think they're in there having devotion or something. You just think they're in there doing whatever. So here, he said, wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Wisdom is understanding God's perspective on it. We want to look at three aspects of the gospel story. Three aspects of the gospel story the time we have remaining. And it's going to take wisdom to perceive it. But our desire is to talk to you, to speak tonight on three aspects of the gospel story. And we're just going to fly through it. But I pray tonight that it compels us and compels souls we should come to God. Come to God. Number one is love. Just write this down, those that are writing down. Number one is love. And we're going to just fly through it. And you put this in your perspective as you're dealing with souls to present these three aspects of the gospel story. Three aspects. One is love. Two is mercy. And three is glory. If these are understood with the depth that the word proclaims with desires that soul would be compelled to listen to the word and give their lives to God. Love, mercy, and glory. The definition of love is a profound, tender, passionate affection for another person. A warm attachment, enthusiasm, or devotion. An unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the good of another. The fatherly concern of God for all humankind, even humanity. Love, if truly understood, should compel us. Turn to John 3.16. John 3.16. depth of God's love to humanity should compel us to live for God for all of our days. I want to read. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him come on should not perish but have everlasting life. Friend, tonight, if you're here under the sound of my voice, if you're tuning into the broadcast, we want you to know that God loves you. That God cares deeply and affectionately about you. God is crazy, so to speak, about you. He is madly in love with you. It said, for God so loved the world. The word there said, so loved. So loved. Why? Because the price that it cost for God to do what was necessary to position himself to help you to the extent that you needed help, it took everything for him. If it didn't say so love there, perhaps his love may not have been deep enough to give up what was necessary in order to redeem you. Follow me now. It says so God, so God didn't have a house full of children. You don't read where he had a companion and all these other things. But it said it's only for God and son. All that he had, he had to send for you and I. So that our lives could be.
be saved. Our sins could be forgiven. It said, for God so loved the world. Not the church. Not but the world. Those that are out there fighting him. God so loved the world that he said, I'm giving up everything I got so that you can get a chance to be saved. Romans chapter 5, verse number 8. Romans 5, verse number 8. Verse number 7. Romans 5, verse number 7, and verse number 8. For scarcely for a righteous man. For scarcely so the righteous man will one die. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet for adventure. They say that sometimes when you when you're defending a president or you you you're, you're like a secret service agent or you you're defending someone famous or someone that's very very esteemed, they say that some of those men are so devoted that they'll run and jump in front of a bullet for them. But it says scarcely for for a righteous man will one die. Come on, Ari. Yet for adventure, come on. For a good man, some would even dare to die. For a good man. Some would even dare to put their lives in jeopardy. Come on, read. But God. But God. Committed his love toward us. Committed his love toward us. In that while you were yet sinners. In that while you were yet sinners. While you were sinning against him. The love of God. Come on. Christ died for us. Christ died for us. Not when we were doing so good. But when we were doing the worst that we could do. When we were doing things behind the scenes when nobody saw us that was directly opposed to the way we were raised. When we were doing things that, that we would be ashamed if some people knew that we were involved in, God still loved and sent his son to die for you in that situation. Let me give you an example. His love, my God, to compel you to go to an altar of prayer and say, Lord, forgive me for all my sins. If you really understood and fathomed his love, a man had a breach between a person. And the breach was deep and a grieving tremendous. So he sent his son, one of two sons, to go and make amends with this man. Let him know that whatever happened, happened. Let's put it behind us. Even though he did me wrong, He's the one that did me wrong. Go and tell him that I forgive him. I'm sorry for anything that I could have done, but just make it right with us. I want to make it right. So he sent his son. His son went and expressed his father's sentiments and said that my father wants to be brought back together. It's been years and, I, and, and you guys have been apart. Even though what you've done, he, he's going to forgive it. The man kills his son. You his son? You you his son? Yeah. Grab my gun. Come here. Come here. You his son? Bam! 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 <laughs> you his son. That's what I mean. You his son. He was his son. When they arrested him, and it was in the state, it allowed capital punishment. And basically, that meant that you took a life. Your life was in a country in which capital punishment, you took a life, your life must be given for the life you took. So, he was convicted of it. And they put him on death row. And in this country, the only way that there was any hope for a person on death row was for an alive person to go in, take his place on death row, there was no appeals. There was no pardon. There was, the only way was for a live person to go in, take his place. And he could go free, but that person was going to die. The man understood this and was so moved by love and desiring for that relationship to be back one. And he grabbed his other son. He said, although you are a younger son, 
come with me. Took him down to the prison. He said, here's my son. Let the man go that just killed me, my son. Now, sir, you can't talk to him. You can't go in there and deal with him and say, if you forgive me, or if you reconcile back with me, then I'll give my son. You can't talk to him. You can only do this with the hopes that possibly one day, maybe he'll be moved by you sacrificing your little boy to the extent that you're going to allow your little boy to die in the electric chair or be decapitated for his sake. You can't go in there and talk with him or negotiate with him. Are you sure you want to do this? You don't have any more children. This is it. Are you sure? This man did you wrong. He killed you. He deserves to die for what he did to your son. Are you sure you want to give your little boy with no assurance that he'll even be willing to reconcile with you? The man said, without a shadow of a doubt, Uh, so without any assurance that he would even be reconciled to the man. The man said without a shadow of a doubt, it hurts, but here's my son. He goes and he takes his place. Death row, set up to die in just a few days. The man walks out without any guarantee that there would even be any reconciliation. Man was portraying that story in regards to understanding the depth of love that God showed towards you. Not to the world, to you. The Bible said for the wages of sin is death. You deserve hell forever My for God. what you've done. You don't deserve heaven. You don't deserve to be forgiven. You deserve for what you did do. You deserve to go to hell for it. But God is saying, I'm sent my son to die for you. Not just back then, but all the way until he comes back. I sent my son to die for you. Not knowing that you would even ever My God. To die on the cross. That's how much I love you. Lord help. That's how much I want to be reconciled back with you. I want us to be one. I'm willing to give all I got. Just hoping that you would just open up your heart mm. and say, Lord, come here. God wants relationship with you that bad. He loves you that bad that he was willing. To give all that he had in hopes that we would consider opening up our hearts and allowing him to come in. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse number 3. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse number 3. Tonight, if you're not saved, God loves you, friend. God loves you. And I pray that the love that God has shown towards you already will compel you to give your life and heart to God. Jeremiah chapter 31. And let me just say this. When you fully, and I just pray God give you an understanding of his love. When you fully understand his love and the extent of what he's done, my God, my God. I often would say, I can't see how. Man, hell, how could God allow for a person to go to hell? But when you really understand the extent of the provisions of what God has done in regards to love, mercy, and glory, and you press past all of that, it's almost too much to consider that you will go past the greatest expression of love that the world has ever shown. 
Can you imagine the story that we shared? That afterwards you come out and all he wants, he's not saying, be my slave or I'm going to kill or be. All he wants is for you to be reconciled. All the man wanted was I gave up my son. I gave up all. I gave up everything I had. All I want you is, is for you to just, just, just be reconciled. I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm not trying to take you to my house and I'm going to beat you for a thousand years. No. You can do what you want to do. All I want you to do is say, I'm sorry. All I want you to do is say, let's be reconciled. God is saying, I gave up all of that not to beat your life down, not to give you some horrible life, but I gave up all of that so you can have a good life. I gave up all of that to help you out. And despite all of that, you will still walk up out of here. After you just left death row, you should be in a lake. You should be burning right now. Walking right by that man. God love even surpasses that. Jeremiah 31, verse 30. Come on. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me. Come on. Saying, Yea. Come on. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. And that love is so strong tonight, friend. No matter what you've done, that love remains. I don't care if you're backside of the night, God's love is still right there. I don't care if you're a drug dealer who messed up your entire community, destroying generation upon generation. God's love for you is still right there. Right, I don't care if you left my God and went to another faith, said, I don't believe that Jesus is God's son, and I've got another book, and I've got another way, this, that, and the other. Don't you know, friend, God's love is still right there. An everlasting love, nothing you can do about God's love is right there saying, please, let me in. Please, allow me to forgive you. Please, let's come back together at one. I don't care if you're a woman of the night. If you've done all type of imaginable things, I don't care if I let you a homebreaker. If I get off thinking about that, I said, man, I got to be a terrible spirit there. How difficult it is to build up a home. How difficult it is to build up a loving marriage where commitment is strong and the children got. How difficult that is for another person to go into your home and destroy it. For another woman to go up into you, you, you and your husband and work y'all relationship out. Y'all got it together. Y'all best friends. Y'all in love with each other. But for another woman to pray on you. My God. Instead of going to get her own. Right. Going to pray on you. And go in and destroy. You got to be low, low, low. And for another man to go your loving wife. Your wife to death do you part. All the women in the world, you do what you want to do. You going to come up into his house where he at work? You going to call his wife? You going to talk to her things that you think he ain't saying? Telling her what you can do beyond what he's doing? Oh, you a low human being. Oh, you. But even in that, God is saying, although humanity may do you as that, I love you with an everlasting love. No matter how far you go, I'll come down here. I'll roll my sleeves up. You got family members that turn it back on you that don't want nothing to do with you. I'll roll my sleeves up. I'll go down to the parts of the community. One of the vice presidents at the place, at a certain place in the community, she said her son had went down and got on drugs, and he went to a place in Jackson that was so deep and so dark and so. She went there to pick him up one night, and she actually had to push. Put 911 on her phone and have it right there. Just put, that's how. She said, if I'd known he was in this part of the community, with, I probably would have just said, listen, you can only the best way you can. But I'm letting you know that God is willing to go some places. My God. He said, he brought me about a horrible pit. A horrible pit of miry clay. Of my, it don't matter what you've done. You wrecked homes, you done drugs, you messed your life up, messed your body up, hurt your earthly parents, you got felonies on your record, you in jail. It doesn't matter what you've done. I will come in there. I will lift you up out of that. I don't care what spirits you've got to hold up. I will deal with every one of those spirits. All I'm asking you, my God, is my God to be desiring for a relationship with me. It doesn't matter how long you've been in that situation. It doesn't matter how filthy my God your life has become. I am willing tonight to go where no man is willing to go for you. I'm willing to bankrupt myself.
yourself, my God. Some parents will get you a good lawyer. Other parents will put a little bit more on the line. Some parents will put their house on the line. God has said, I'm willing to put it all on the line, my God. It don't matter. For you tonight, I am willing to bless you. I am willing to turn it all around. I am willing to forgive completely. I am willing to go as far as I have to go for you tonight. Because of love. God's love should compel us to be ours. But even if love doesn't, mercy should. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Mercy. Mercy. Mercy is compassion or forbearance shown, especially to an offender or to one's subject, to one's power. Lenient or compassion treatment. Clemency. Alleviation of distress and relief. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Withholding of the punishment. <clears throat> I want to read. Salvation is an act of great mercy. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you have to quicken. You have to quicken? Who were dead in trespasses and sin. Come on. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. Come on. According to the prince of the power of the air. Don't get too high and lofty. I don't care what your situation is, how long you've been saved. You have to quicken. Who were dead? You was out there in times past. We all had our conversations. We all did some dirt. We all did things, my God. So don't you get so sanctified this and then that you think you're so clean and you this, that, and the other. Roll back the curtains of memory now and then. Amen. Amen. Just roll back just a little bit. You probably see yourself doing some foolishness. Amen. Don't think you're too good for nobody. You ain't too good. But by the mercy of God. Amen. If it had not been for mercy, my God. Amen. Come on and read. You have the quickened. Yes. Who were dead. You was messed up. Come on and read. Wherein in time past. Come on. You walked according to the course of the world. Don't look at him like that. You wore tight stuff too. You walked according to the court. You wore some fake stuff too. Don't you look at them rolling your eyes. You was just as fake. Amen. Before you got something down in your soul. Amen. Amen. That relationship with God caused you to be comfortable about who you are. Amen. You'll beautify the meek with salvation. You ain't got to put all the fake stuff on no more because you're so beautiful on the inside. Come. You don't realize, amen, he get done with you, my God. You don't realize 
say, man, that it's kind of lonely and it's real cold outside. The Holy Ghost can tell me. You say, I still go like that. But the Holy Ghost can't help me. You have to deal with some stuff. Hey, man, folk talking about you, amen, but you ain't going wrong with your head now because the Holy Ghost said, no weapon formed against you. Amen. man shall prosper. You ain't got to turn all your money on lawyers. Come on now. Some folks call that church of God lawyer. You get a whole bunch of people to fight your case. You ain't got to spend all your money on lawyers. Amen. The Holy Ghost, amen. He's your attorney. Hey, get on your knees, hey, amen. Yeah. You ain't lost the case yet, hey, amen. Yeah. Come on and read. You have to be quickened. Yes. Who were dead. Verse number three. three. Come on and read. Among whom also we all had our conversation. Every one of us was all messed up. Our In lives. Times past. Come on, times past. Not now. Not that false doctrine now. Talking about even after you can say you still sin. You still messed up. In times past, past tense. Amen. You have to be quick and who were dead. Yeah. You ain't dead no more. You made a lie. You were born again. Yeah. Thank God he delivered you out of sin. Yeah. He's giving you grace, amen, to remain out of sin. Yeah. He regenerates you so you ain't got a desire to sin. Yeah. Amen. He gives you the power, amen. So many have received him, so then gave you power. Yeah. Thank the Lord. So this is the past tense, amen, in times past. Come on, in the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Come on. And of the mind. And of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath. Born in sin. Come on. Even as others. Even as others. But God. Oh, but God. Who Come on, he is rich in mercy. Who is rich in mercy. For his great love wherewith he loved us. For his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sin. Even when we were dead in sin. Hath quickened us together with Christ. God who is rich in mercy. Rich in mercy. Rich in mercy. Why did he say that? He said God who is rich in mercy. Because every single sin has to be paid for or dealt with in order for God's paradigm of justice to stand. Mm -mm. Okay. Apostle Paul was speaking and he said we don't have time to go there but he said he was before blasphemer sinner who was chief he said but mercy God who is rich in mercy every sin that you commit has to be paid for in order for justice to stand. Mercy is to acquit or hold back judgment when justice says it must go here. It said God who is rich in mercy because some of us did more than just take a cookie out of the cookie jar. Yeah. <laughs> He knew he was going to deal with some of us who done more than just told a little white lie, so to speak. Right. But some of us had a rap sheet following us for a long time. But the Bible said God, who is rich in mercy, God who has an abundance amount of mercy to deal with every single place where sin is, justice says it must be paid for. But every single place in your life that sin is, God is placing mercy on top of it. God is saying mercy. Mer don't kill her. Mercy. Mer she deserves mercy. Mer Go over real quick to Ephesians chapter 33. I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 33 verse number 19. Exodus chapter 33 verse 19. God who is rich in mercy. Come on. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Uh-huh. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. Uh-huh. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. Come on. And will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Stop right there. He set up a plan, says, that showed justice had to have its part in order for order to be set. But he said... I understand that this plan is being established. But I want you to know, although I'm establishing this plan, mankind have failed. They went into bondage. 
Pilate, Joseph's brother sold him. They went into battle. Uh, uh, they went into Egypt's confinement, slavery. God exited them out, took them out, and God was setting up a law in which they had to live by. And the law had justice all over it, meaning that you have to do this. But God said, I'm setting up a law, but I want you to know I'm reserving the right to violate my own law when I want to violate it because I care so much about somebody. My Lord, my Lord. He said, I, I, I'm setting this up. I'm putting this together. But I, I want you to know, I let Moses put this in the book so they don't get an against me when they say, but they did this, God, and they did that, and she did this. in order with this, that, and the other. Then I'm going to take you through Leviticus where you got to give all the laws that the Levites must impute and must put in order. The sons of Aaron must dictate and line up. I'm going to do all Deuteronomy more further laws to give to the further generation. Come back again. Give all those. But before you write any of that stuff down, understand that there is an appendix clause that says I I'm about to tell you all these laws of the church of God, of this, that, and the other. But understand, I will have mercy upon whom I. That's why you don't give up on nobody. You have no idea what people are dealing with. Don't look on the outside, but look deep in the heart. God said, I will have mercy upon whom I have mercy. No matter what they've done. And tonight he's saying that. My Go over God. to the Roman church, you know. Personally. Praise God. Tonight, that mercy word would compel you to say, Lord, I want to come back home. Lord, I know I've done wrong, but by mercy, will you have mercy? Will you have mercy? Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Come on, read. Romans 2, verse 4. Or despises I'm thou sorry, three, three, I, I'm, yeah, three, five. Romans and chapter two. Thinkest thou this, O man, yes, sir, that judges them which do such things, uh -huh. and doest the same? Come on. That thou shalt escape the judgment of God. My, my, come on. Or despises thou the riches of His goodness? Come on. And forbearance. Uh huh. And long suffering. Come on. Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. My, 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 my God. Not knowing that the goodness of God, if you understand the fullness of this text, the goodness of God is translated 
It is the mercy of God. The long suffering, the forbearance, it is the, those are acts of mercy. That means that something should have been done, but I'm waiting to see if you're going to change. My Lord. Something should have been done here, but I'm just preparing you. I'm not allowing you to be cut off. I'm telling death angels, stay back. That car did flip three times. You should have been dead that night. That man, he did have AIDS. He go both ways. He had full-blown AIDS. He was taking you home that night. But I stopped you from going all the way with that. When you did those pills that night, you did enough to OD. It is the goodness of God. It is the, when you understand, all I get and get understanding, wisdom is a principal thing. When you understand the mercy of God, it should lead you to your knees saying, Lord, forgive me. I don't deserve to be alive right now. Lord, I've done some things. I've been in some places. I should have been dead. That bullet should have hit me. Lord, I should have been in jail forever. I shouldn't be out right now. Lord, because of that, the rest of my day, I'm giving it to you. Okay. It is the goodness of God that should lead you to repentance, my right God. Yes. God will let you know my God. the mercy of God. That car, that night, you were supposed to be in it. I've seen that happen time and time. A saint child come up to the office. And you understand? As a matter of fact, I just had it happen. The young man came up to the office. See that car that night. Many times, they all died. I should have been. One time with the saint's child, another saint's husband, and it went up to do a drug deal. City of Detroit. And the drug deal went bad. And I want you to know something. You'd be shocked if you knew how many drug deals was going bad, but mercy kept in. My God. You'd be shocked if you knew. You thought you had your stuff all together. You were smooth. You had this. You'd be shocked how many times it was all. The young man came to my office the other day. School student. He was a little bit older. I got a call. They said they found a young man dead. So he said, you need to go over there. You fall early in the morning. You need to go over there. They found a young man dead. You need to go over there. I said, okay, give me the number to the father. Let me get, let me give him a call. Called him. A little bit later, came to office. Son, just got murdered. Just died. And the young man said, You don't understand. One of the same children with these two people went out to Detroit for this drug deal and it went bad. One of the same children came and said, You don't understand. I was supposed to be with them. I would have been with them. But something happened. Something happened. Where God just prevented it. And when you really understand how you truly should be have checked in. So Luke, that's how they, I went to Alcatraz the other day and they showed how you look. come in, that you go to this little section, they give you all your stuff, they take all your stuff, put it in the bag, put it over there, and you take all your stuff, they give you a blanket, they give you this, they use this, that, and the other. You take your thing, and you go down and they give you a little number. And they had streets. One street was Broadway. One street was called Michigan Ave. Another one was this. It was a little like hallway. You go down. And then you go to cell number six. Four, five, six. You go in there. And you sit down and say, it's going to be my home for the next 40 years. Some of you tonight should have already checked in the hill. My God. Where's my place at? All eternity. My bag. We're, we're, we're on, on aisle number four. Aisle number four. I'm talking about we saints. I should have checked in. Aisle number four. Number eight. Four. I'm trying to get off the highway because it was all thick with ice. I'm trying to get off the cars. 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 I'm trying to get
and dig in the ground. Take my fingernails and dig in the, dig, dig in, the, in, the, uh, in, in the in the ice. Just on the highway, just trying. I tried to scoop, but I can't get nowhere. To, this car can't stop. They, I, it was the same thing in the car I was in. This car is coming right at me. But I'm trying some type of way. I got some traction at the last minute and rolled off the cake. Bam! That night, one of many, I should have been checking it. Aisle number four, aisle number seven. Calm down. So, all eternity, all eternity, sitting here watching the Saints have service, thinking about all the chances that I had, thinking about all the opportunities that I had, thinking about all the times that I had an opportunity to get saved, but I did it. But mercy, mercy kicked in. And he said, if you really understand mercy, the mercy of God should lead you to repentance. Oh my God. The mercy of God, do you really understand it? Listen, why should it lead you to repentance? It's maybe as far as we can get tonight. Because if you understood it, you'd understand that all I have right now is borrowed. I should in all justifiable reasons, I should be dead and gone. So here, because mercy, any days I got left, I'm going to give them to you. My God. Amen. I shouldn't be here anyway. I should be gone anyway. I should be in hell. together said the Lord. He said, if you've got any element of a heart, love should cause you to say, Lord, you gave your son to die in my place because you love me so much and all you want is a relationship with me. I mean, how can I be so evil? I'm not, and you ain't asking me to do craziness. You just want a relationship with me. That's all you want. How can I be so hard? You know how it is when you, you see somebody and they want to be your friends? It takes a real low person to be like, nah, I ain't gonna be a friend. Get away from me. I get away from me. God is saying, after all I've done for you, I just want to be a friend. My Lord. I, just, yeah. I love you so I gave everything I got in the world. Yes, Lord. Yes. Just, just, I just want to be your, your like, like you somebody. Your friend. My Lord. My Lord. Like, like, like you are. God of heaven is on his knees. Please, can I just be your friend, please? Don't reject it. Don't slam the door. Don't, don't hang up on me. Please. Can I please? Can I? Can I leave me alone? Hey. Uh, Baby, one day you'll be my friend. I love you. Oh, you just leave me alone. I'm going to do me. My Lord. My Lord. He said if you really understood his love, oh, it should cause you to say, Lord. Here I am. Here I am. I want to be your friend. Come into my heart. Let's be back one. I said, if that don't get you, if your heart understands love doesn't touch you. That's why I said you got a heart in your heart because if your heart was just normal, it would cost you to go to your knees. You got a heart in it. He said, because I made hearts to respond to love. My God. He said, I'm the one that created it. I made your heart to respond to love. So you got to harden it not to receive the greatest love. He said, if that don't compel you, then understanding the mercy that has been extended to you, the young people, saints, children, people you grew up with that have already been held. 15 or 20 years. My God. Why not you? Why not you? You ain't no better than so and so's daughter. Why not you? You ain't no better than brother so and so's son. Why not you? Why don't you? Mercy. Mercy is the only reason tonight that I've extended your breath to allow you even an opportunity. Who do you take? My God. Mercy. He said, understanding the goodness of God or the mercy of God will lead you to repentance. He said, Lord, forgive me for all of my sins. And that's the last part. We couldn't get into it. 
But the first two parts is what God do for us, love and mercy. But the last part is when we give glory back to him by allowing him to change our lives and the world to see what you used to be and what you are now. That had to be God. That had to be God. To see your mind. You're not constrained to be saved. You want to be saved. You got to go over your faith. You used to be bound, but now you're free. You used to be burdened down, but now you've lifted up. You used to be dark, but now you're light. You used to be lonely, but now you're comforted. Only God could have done that. You now are glorifying Him. allows, my God, we allow him to manifest his glory in the world through our lives and what he does for us. Therefore, we compel others to come to God as well. Love all he's done. Mercy what you should have had happen, but have And last, glory. glory. You going back to him I said, Lord, let me pay you back. Lord, let me glorify you or glorify yourself through my life. God's love, God's mercy, and glorifying God. Shall we Tonight, 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 is there one that wants to come and pray? Mercy of God. Glory of God. You son. Let's come. 